This wheel has some great things going for it. It may be one of my favorite 20 inch wheels. Welcome to Freshly Charged, the YouTube channel where we review personal electric vehicles like this Begode EX30. 134 volt system, powerful 4,000 watt C40 high torque motor. Speeds of 55 plus miles per hour, so this thing hauls. All right, we're gonna keep riding. At our first stop, we're gonna talk about the things that we love about this wheel. All right, so we replaced the pads. We took off those old pads that weren't sticking on very well, weren't super comfortable, were not adjustable. And we put some third party pads on, the Grizzla Flow pads. This also was not super easy. The Velcro that it came with wasn't sticking very well and still isn't sticking the best. And I think that's partially because this metal casing, it has these grooves and it has this coating on it that makes it slick. So almost like a non-stick pan type surface. And then on top of that, because the metal battery casings are lower positioned to give it kind of a lower center of gravity, you have less surface area now to put pads on. And so you can see here, these pads are kind of sticking up off of it. So Grizzly designed these fairing plates to solve the two biggest problems with the EX30, the non-stick metal casing and the limited surface area. Grizzly also has some pretty sweet modular upgrades to customize your rides, so be sure to check them out. We've left the top pad on that works as a seat. And while it's more durable, because it's more firm and hard, this corner here really does pinch on your knee. So we'll see if we get used to that over time. The Grizzly pads, in general, they look nice, they feel nice, they're adjustable, and as the weather warms up, I think the adhesive will stick better. EX30 pedals are high. They're not nearly as high as the Master Pro, and we can bring in the Sherman. <laughs> Six and a half inches for the Sherman Max. About almost 10 inches for the EX30 about 12 inches for the master pro if you don't like super high pedals super tall ucs the ex30 is a good kind of in between we've done high speed tests in the past and they haven't ended up well we're just going to be doing an acceleration test and just a, a speed test in general we're not going to try to reach the maximum speed because once you pass the maximum speed we found bad things happen <laughs> So those beeps are loud and you're not gonna miss it. That's one of the benefits. Sometimes when you're going high speed, you can't hear the beeps, but it seems like the beeping is going on much too early. You weren't going all that fast. No, I was just going like 30, 35 on here. So I'm not sure what's going on. I'm gonna, I've tried turning off all the beeps on the Begoat app. I've turned up the speed warning to the highest amount. So don't get me wrong, I feel like I'm not hitting the top speeds. I've seen people doing 55 miles per hour on this wheel, but it scares me when I hear beep, 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 because it just brings me back to the master crash. <laughs> yeah, it's a fast wheel. That's one thing I love about this is how instant the power is being delivered as soon as you push forward. This is by far one of the best wheels I felt for acceleration. I think I found my favorite thing about this wheel. It is great for trails. I was crushing this trail. I normally feel worried because it's uneven and bumpy and that I might over torque the wheel because of my weight. But I was just hauling down this with confidence and it was cruising nice and smooth. Compared to the Sherman Max, you have the power, you've got the higher clearance, you've got the suspension in your favor. The one thing though that I'm always worried about is kind of this lower clearance here and uh, with the edge, with this bar, and it looks like so far we were able to go through all this single track stuff, no problem. Any extreme angles, inclines, that's the stuff where you're gonna worry about uh, hitting that corner there, especially if you're taking tight turns. Let's keep on riding. All right, what happened there? That was a little bit too big and I was going a little too slow. Inertia is your friend when you're riding trails. I mean, we just crashed on nice soft ground. Um, imagine if you were to crash on asphalt. The impact is going to be directly onto these metal battery casings. It's a nice, clean looking design. It's basically the motor, the wheel, a frame, and then batteries hanging off the frame. The thing is, the battery is pretty darn exposed. And so luckily, no damage here. It is a metal casing. Some people say that's better 
because metal is more durable. Bagode is basically relying on the pads to protect the batteries. This movement to go minimalist around the batteries, you know, it's got its pros and cons, but we'll keep riding it. Obviously, it had we had the pads on there, that would have helped to protect the batteries a little bit more. Okay, we're gonna check out the free wheel spin test on this guy. Look at that, we're at full, almost a full charge, 90%. So 72 miles per hour is where it's cutting off. Now, obviously that's not the top speed of this. This is just the speed of this motor without any weight, any load on it. Let's talk about the things that we love about the Bagode EX30. The raw power of the C40 high torque motor is my favorite thing about this wheel. It's great on trails. It's great on the street when I just want to take off like a rocket. All these wheels have this instant power that goes with them, but this one just has a little bit more that makes it more exciting. So what that means for me is this wheel has a super powerful motor, but the form factor is in a smaller package than say the Master Pro or the V13. And so it doesn't take as much effort, much as much lean to get the thing moving. It's more responsive. I love that the pedals are lighter spiked and just as big as the previous models. The lower mounted battery is nice for stability at high speeds. It has this increased design around it to protect the wheel In the previous models the controller box was pretty much connected to the battery box rather than having this reinforced CNC metal around it. The kickstand is nice to have, works well. The three inch wide rim, I love that about this wheel. It adds to the stability when riding fast. And then on trails, I felt it was nice when I was pivoting through the different types of terrain, the ridges of the single track. A lot of times when you hit those ridges of the single track, it feels like you're gonna get bucked off of the wheel but I felt with a three inch wide tire, it wasn't nearly as bad. The upgrades that they made from previous versions, pads are more durable now and the lights much brighter. I also enjoy the lift bars so that we can more easily lift this. So the water resistance has increased on this wheel. They've given it a water resistance rating, but I don't know if that's an official rating or that's just a Bagot official rating. This tail light, I like the way it looks. It's like LED lights framed in some type of epoxy. You saw me crash on it. It's still there. It's not broken. A lot of the lights in the past on the Bagot wheels have been such a weak focal point and can break easily. Speaking about the suspension piece, it's not loud. On the Master Pro, it's a really loud wheel and it doesn't instill confidence. This wheel, when you drop off curbs, it sounds solid. But I don't hear any type of rattling or clunking noises at all. Not only does it sound solid, it feels solid. The CST tire on the EX30, I was worried that I was gonna feel like I was getting tracked out because it's just these straight lines, they're not off-centered, but I had no issues with them. And I think that has to do with them being wider on that three inch rim, really helps for stability without feeling tracked out. I do love riding this thing seated. It's nice, it's not too tall, it's not too low. I think the Master Pro is easier to ride seated, but this feels great because it's still pretty tall and the, the cushion feels nice and soft in your butt. It's easy to take for granted on these big powerful wheels, the suspension, because we just kind of assume that all these big powerful wheels now come with suspension. But the suspension on this has a couple changes from prior versions. The biggest thing is this valve stem comes straight out rather than parallel with the adjustment knob. They made it easier to fill with air and they've made it easier to adjust the knob without running into each other. So when you move it counterclockwise, it's going to make it faster. So it's gonna balance a lot faster. When you move it clockwise, it's gonna slow down the dampening to almost lock it out. Yeah, it's pretty much locked out. If you're gonna be doing a lot more speed racing, you'll wanna slow down the rebound. If you're gonna be riding trails that are bumpy, stairs, you wanna make the rebound fast. Star of the show though has to be the motor, the power, the smoothness of it. And at our next stop, we'll talk about the things that we don't like about this wheel. One thing about this wheel is it's a joy to bump. The suspension, the power, it's just so finely tuned. It's so nice. Woo. And it just sounds so solid compared to the Master Pro we were riding the other day. So if you want to channel your inner Mike Leahy and do stunts, do bonks, <laughs> we're having a lot of fun playing around with this. Yeah, you can bonk it, but just make sure the things you're hitting aren't super steep. So this has got a nice curvature to it. 
makes it easy to bonk and we're not bottoming out. One of the fears that we had at the beginning of the video was that uh, we would be bottoming out. We would be hitting the corners that were so low. Um, and uh, we never had that problem. We did a lot of stairs. We did a lot of bonking. Tippity happy to machine. A lot of the problems come because you don't have your suspension right. You don't have your tire properly inflated. And then you need to be strategic about what types of terrain you're hitting. You do all that, you're gonna have a great time on this wheel. Yeah, I'm loving this. This is the worst wheel for pads. Now I'm starting to have that one come up. This one's come up. The metal casing has this finish on it that makes it almost like Teflon. This is the best wheel I've had going up the stairs. The torque in the wheels, I climbed right up these stairs, no problem at all. So this pad, we mentioned it before, it really hurts the inner knee part. Right here, it digs into it, especially when I don't have any pads to grip onto myself, so I'm pretty much gripping the wheel as tight as I can. It really hurts. Andrew has very supple, soft inner knees, right? So we need to protect those. <laughs> the other thing that I don't like, the screen, the display, two things. While it's big, a lot of that real estate is wasted by this third zero. This zero here does not do anything. And yeah. so once you have it in kilometers and you go over a hundred kilometers, it'll just read 001, 002, 003. And the other thing too, you can't see it in direct sunlight. And it gets scratched easy. The headlight, it's recessed in, which is nice, but I feel like it's recessed in a little too far. This pad cover like basically covers the lights. At least it won't be blinding people because I see a lot of people keep their lights too high and it blinds pedestrians. But I don't like that if there's nobody out there, you're in the middle of nowhere, it would be nice to have high beams. The kickstand is nice but it gets in the way when you're going down steep stairs. I've been very selective of what type of stairs I'm gonna go down. If they're anything greater than your standard six inch stairs, you're typically going to hit the kickstand on there. So there's not a lot of clearance on this wheel. That's one big issue. The fit and finish for this wheel, I, I would say is better than most Bagode wheels, but it still has the same design where they have exposed wires. I'm not a big fan of it. I do like that they've decided to at least blend it in a little bit, be painted it black, cover it in black. But I mean, you have these exposed wires. To me, that's kind of tacky. The pedal clearance is good. Those. That was sketchy with pads coming loose. <laughs> that was not a problem of the wheel itself. It was the pads not being able to stick to that almost Teflon non-stick surface. It felt great, like the first five stairs, and then the last set, I was like, just hold on to dear life and don't snap my ankle. Yeah. So that's how it felt. And that's because this is what happened. Yeah. Like this battery casing is preventing anything from sticking to it. While we're riding back, we'll talk about our final thoughts and who we think should get this game. In conclusion, I feel like the EX30 is probably the best 20 inch wheel out there that I've tried. I haven't tried them all, but love the suspension, love the power, just wish they would fix the pads and make it easier so we can put third party pads on them. If you want the most powerful commuter that can handle light off-road trails, the EX30 is the best one I've ridden. If you guys have any other questions, check out eucguide.com for our full written review. When you guys ride, wear your safety gear.